morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis and while some folks may call that healing, renewing and regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we want to hear from you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, connective tissue, estrogen, if you have questions about the Ingevity products, formulations, ingredients, skin health questions, 844-236-6010 is your number on the bright side. If you have a success story you'd like to share or if you want to contribute to the conversation, likewise, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, you can call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Make sure you ask them about the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, nutritional powder, multivitamin powder, Mineral powder, phytonutrient powder, absolutely packed with water-soluble vitamins and electrolytes, which are so important. We lose our water-soluble vitamins and electrolytes every time we go to the bathroom. If you're drinking a lot of water, you're especially likely to be deficient in these substances. And that's one of the reasons why most folks notice such quick results when they use the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and all the longevity products, Healthy Start Packs, Aptive, Fucoid Z. Ultimate Nightly Essence, Ultimate Selenium. You can find out all about our longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Retinol 5% Gel made with vitamin C and retinol and our Transdermal Delivery Matrix. And that is it. No preservatives, no fragrances, no fillers, no wax, no oil, no silicone, no water, no emulsifier, no surfactant, no nothing. Nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. If you've tried to use retinoic acid or retinol in the past and haven't been able to, you might want to check this product out. It's made with vitamin C to mitigate some of the toxicity and because it has no, or mitigate some of the irritation, I should say, and because it has no preservatives or fragrances or anything really, emulsifiers or wax that can irritate the skin. A lot of folks who can't use Retin-A, retinoic acid, or ordinary retinol products can use our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. You can check it out at truthtreatments.com as well as our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. We're talking female hormone. Actually, I don't want to say female hormone, even though it has a reputation for being a female hormone, estrogen. It is much more than that. Men make estrogen. Yes, of course, as we've said, it's, a, it's the primary hormone of female sexual characteristics, breast development, maturation of the female reproductive system, but it also plays a role in the brain and the nervous system, the immune system. It's a stress hormone. And yesterday we talked about how it's a leak-inducing hormone. It causes leaks in tissue. Think leaky gut syndrome. You probably heard of that term. We've talked a lot about leaky gut syndrome as leading to dirty blood, which in turn leads to all health challenges. All health challenges are about dirty blood, and the blood becomes dirty primarily through leaky gut. 
Everybody who has a health challenge, a long-term chronic health challenge that is, including autoimmune disease, is dealing with this issue. And estrogen is a leak-inducing substance. Estrogen will induce leaks in the gut, just like it induces leaks into the cells. That's one of the ways it induces the division of cells. It promotes the, the uh, a leakage of fluid into cells. That's why it causes water retention. Estrogen can also be thought of as a general growth-inducing substance, especially for connective tissue fibers. We're not done talking about connective tissue, folks. We started talking about estrogen because of its role as, uh, as a connective tissue stimulating substance. Doctors think this is a good thing, and they'll actually prescribe estrogen creams topically. And sometimes you'll see phytoestrogens, plant estrogens in, uh, in uh, cosmetic products, especially soy. However, I don't particularly think that forcing the body to grow connective tissue is a good thing. Growth of connective tissue fibers should never be forced. It should never be modified by exogenous, that is, from outside the body hormones, especially potent steroid hormones. Hormones are not the same kinds of chemicals as nutrients. Hormones are, in essence, on-off switches that turn on chemical reactions in the body. Nutrients sustain and, and act as raw materials or stimulators for activity inside a cell. Hormones are switches. They turn them on and off. They turn activities in a cell on and off. This is not always a good thing. In fact, it's never a good thing to do it artificially, especially under conditions of nutritional deficiency. If you are deficient in raw materials, protein, essential fats, if you're deficient in vitamins and minerals and you try to jack up the production of connective tissue with hormones, you can run into all kinds of problems and this is where hormone replacement therapy can become toxic. Hormones are potent. They turn things on and off. Not like vitamins and minerals and what we call the essential nutrients or the mighty 90 essential nutrients which function more as raw materials, as building blocks. Hormones are literally on off switches. You've got two main classes of hormones. You've got water-soluble hormones, which for the most part we call peptides or protein-like. And then we have the fatty hormones, which we call steroid hormones. The water-soluble hormones, they're flushed in and out and they're quick-acting. They're not as, as significant when it comes to toxicity or health challenges. But the steroid hormones, man, those things are powerful. They are the most powerful chemicals in the body. That's why we always talk about cholesterol as being so important because the steroid hormones all come from cholesterol. In fact, the steroid hormones are actually versions of cholesterol. This is why I rail against the use of statin drugs. This is why I think using cholesterol-lowering pharmacology is one of the stupidest things the medical model does. Among a whole list of stupid things the medical model does, near the top or at the top of the list is suppressing cholesterol because of its relationship to these powerful, powerful growth-producing, growth-inducing, uh, wellness-producing, stress management chemicals we call the steroid hormones. The steroid hormones are way more powerful than the pepti peptide hormones because they stick like all fats, they stick around. The steroid hormones are involved in long-term health. The peptide hormones are involved in more short-term activities. The steroid hormones are involved in things like growth, repair, stress management, and their activities are tightly, tightly regulated. It may seem like because these things are so powerful that they make ideal medication and they make ideal pharmacological intervention. And they are indeed used this way. They're used for fertility and tissue building and anti-aging, but in reality, it is their potency that makes them so problematic. It is their potency that makes them so dangerous to play around with pharmacologically. And this is especially true about the estrogens, which are the most powerful of the steroid hormones. The steroid hormones are the most powerful hormones, and the estrogens are the most powerful of the steroid hormones. That's why you've got to be really, really, really careful with HRT, hormone replacement therapy. Now, progesterone is nowhere near as toxic as estrogen. So if you're going to do HRT, I personally think you should stick to progesterone. You may get some connective tissue benef building benefits from estrogen. I understand this. And this is where estrogen creams, topical estrogen creams can be used. Sometimes doctors will use estrogen to, build, uh, to help build the connective tissue we call bone. But I'm telling you something, you are running a high, high risk of all kinds of health challenges, including cancer, if you mess around with estrogen as a hormone replacement therapy intervention. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after. Okay. 
Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com. Also, benfuchsarchives.com. Have search engines up if you miss a program or you want to review a specific topic or direct a friend or customer or client loved one to a specific topic, benfuchsarchives.com and also brightsideben.com have search engines. You can also check out our blog and news stories at brightsideben.com and pharmacistben.com and you can of course purchase Longevity products or sign up to join the Brightsideben team off our websites as well, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. 844-236-6010 is our number today. Got lines open for you, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about hormone replacement therapy or estrogen or progesterone or skin health questions or if you just have a common or success story, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. So we're talking about estrogen, hormone replacement therapy. These things are super duper potent and while it seems like this may make uh, make them ideal for pharmacological intervention. In my opinion, it makes them really, really problematic. You've got all kinds of different estrogens. There's three main estrogens. You've got a whole slew of metabolites or breakdown products of estrogen. And it's these breakdown products of estrogen that really uh, create, create health challenges when it comes to this hormone. The technical name for these breakdown products is catechol estrogens or C-A-T-E-C-H-O-L, catechol estrogens. And it's super important, as we've said so many times, that you eliminate these catechol estrogens effectively and quickly. Elimination of the catechol estrogens requires a healthy liver. If you're using prescription drugs, if you're drinking alcohol, if you're smoking cigarettes, this elimination of catechol estrogens can be compromised. And your risks for estrogenic diseases, including cancer, will be increased. If you have a fatty liver, and one out of three Americans have fatty liver, again, disease risk will be increased. And the combination of insulin resistance and catechol estrogens is a major risk factor for diseases, especially cancers. Catechol estrogens react with insulin, Catechol estrogens can make your insulin less active. Catechol estrogens can lead to diabetes and poor blood sugar control. The combination of excessive sugar and blood, uh, high blood sugar and catechol estrogens will have a negative effect on health. You could see where we run into problems if we just dump estrogen into the body with hormone replacement therapy. If you're, on, if you're on HRT and you're not processing your estrogen effectively at the lever, at the level of the liver, or at the level of the intestine, if you're dealing with elevated blood sugar, if you're dealing with insulin resistance, you're in big trouble. And that, that covers hundreds of millions of people, maybe 200 million people, maybe more, are dealing with these kinds of health challenges. In fact, I would say that it's this combination of poor estrogen clearance plus insulin and blood sugar issues. And you don't, by the way, have to be a diabetic to be dealing with dysglycemia. This notion that, oh, I had my blood sugar checked and I'm normal, uh, even though you have health challenges, is silly. Diabetes is not measured, or the disease we call diabetes is not measured on blood tests. Blood tests, has, uh, blood tests are crazy, really. In my opinion, to make an assessment on health by your blood tests is really crazy because blood tests go by reference ranges and standard values. Reference ranges are statistics. Human beings are not statistics. Human beings are individuals. Statistics only work for large numbers. So to be pharmacologically medicated or to have surgical procedures done or to be diagnosed with a disease based on your test scores is ludicrous. Individuals are not, are, individual health cannot be determined by statistical measurements. There's three kinds of lies. There's lies, there's damn lies, and there's statistics. Statistics are used to create reference ranges so that we can be lumped into categories, so we can be put into the computer, so doctors don't have to think, and doctors don't have to look at our symptoms. Can, doctors can just look at our numbers and then go to their little magic book of drug protocols and see what kind of drugs we get to take, or see what kind of drugs we're allowed to take if you're at a, if you're a Kaiser or some kind of HMO. 
In any case, dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar, can occur even if your blood sugar scores, your test scores, are normal. And if you have dysglycemia and you're on HRT, you're potentially in big trouble. This is where HRT gets its bad reputation. This is where hormone replacement therapy can lead to things like increased risks for heart disease, increased risk for cancer, increased risk for autoimmunity. All of this is associated with changes in estrogen levels that occur with both hormone replacement therapy and aging. And by the way, this is especially true about the nervous system. From the journal Endocrinology, 1992, November, quote, estradiol treatment has been shown to result in the destruction of 60% of neurons in the hypothalamic arcuate nucleus. That's a part of the brain. Evidence suggests that the mechanism of estrogen-induced neurotoxicity involves the conversion of estrogen to catechol estrogen, unquote. It's these catechol estrogens. Interestingly, vitamin E, which we're going to be talking about here, if not tomorrow or the next day, vitamin E can be very protective against estrogen toxicity. Researchers in this article, Endocrinology, uh, 1992, November 1992, write, in this study, we examined whether treatment with antioxidant vitamin E protects neurons from the neurotoxic action of estradiol. Quote, our results demonstrate that chronic vitamin E treatment prevents the decretment, that is the breakdown, in, uh, in hypothalamic concentrations resulting in neuron loss, suggesting that vit uh, vitamin E treatment can prevent the onset of persistent Cornification—that's destruction of, of blood vessel of uh, nerve cells. I don't really want to get into too much of these details here, but the bottom line is vitamin E protects. Vitamin E is amazing, amazing stuff. If you're on HRT, take vitamin E, 400 international units a day, mixed to cough rolls. Heck, no matter what, just take 400 international units of vitamin E a day. Vitamin E is amazing stuff. It's not found in many foods. We're going to be talking about it in a couple of days. There's other nutrients that you can use for, for estrogen toxicity, which we'll be talking about, vitamins as well as minerals. So what can you do to keep estrogen metabolism healthy? If you're on HRT, if you're getting older, or if you have any kind of estrogenic health challenges, including fibrocystic breast, endometriosis, or perhaps, uh, God forbid, if you're dealing with cancer, what can you do to keep your estrogen metabolism healthy? For one thing, if you're on HRT, you should always be using progesterone with estrogen and not fake progesterone, not the pharmaceutical progesterone, which is technically called progestin and has names like Provera, Agestin, Cycrin. Doctors use these substances not just for HRT, not just for hormone replacement. They'll also use progestins to treat endometriosis, uterine bleeding, for birth control. They're also, by the way, interestingly, uh, these progestins, these fake progesterones, are used as chemical castration for sex offenders. And this highlights the toxicity of these things. They actually will use them to chemically castrate sex offenders, the same drugs that they give women uh, for uh, hormone replacement therapy. Even doctors and even scientists who work in hormone research, sometimes I read papers where they confuse the terms progesterone and progestin. They're not synonymous. Progesterone is not progestin. And if your doctor is giving you Cycrin or Provera or Agestin or any kind of progestin drug and say, here, I'm going to give you progesterone, he's wrong. They're not the same thing. Progestins are toxic pharmaceutical drugs. Progesterone is a non-toxic hormone and has a lot of really wonderful benefits, as we've talked about in the past on the Bright Side. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We will return right after this. Don't go away. And we're back on the Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages. This is your common sense nutritional program. You don't have to be a scientist to understand health and nutrition. You don't have to be a doctor. You don't have to be, uh, go to medical school. You don't have to be a scientist. It's just really common sense. How the body breaks down is simply a matter of the wrong things getting in and not enough of the right things getting in. It's all about dirty blood and it's all about a messed up gut and messed up blood sugar system and don't forget stress. Psychological stress, mental stress, emotional stress, and physiologic stress. In fact, it's not even stress, it's strain. We get mixed up between these two terms, stress and strain. Back in the, uh, the pre-stress leads to disease days, 
which uh, about the 1920s or 1930s, that's when we first started to understand that excessive amounts of stress can have an effect on physiology. It was all this guy named Hans Hans Selye's brainchild. Hans Selye was a biochemist from the 1920s, Selye, S-E-L-Y-E, Selye. He came up with something called the General Adaptation Syndrome, or, or uh, General Adaptation Syndrome, the GAS, and he talked about how burdening the body can create disease. And he called it stress, but really what it is, it's strain. Stress and strain are engineering terms referring to the kind of forces that are on bridges and buildings. Stress is the force, strain is the response to the force. It's not the stress per se that's causing the problem, it's the strain, it's our body's responses to the stress. The stresses of life, the stresses of food, the stresses of chemistry, the stresses of, uh, of pollution, the stresses in, in our 21st century lifestyle. It's not the stresses, though, that are the problem. It's how we respond to the stresses. The strain is really the problem. Stress is the force, strain is the response, and it is the response to the stresses that cause the issue. When we're healthy, when we're strong, we can respond to stresses effectively. The body is a homeostatic system. That means it pulls the ups, downs, and it raises the downs up. It adjusts, and it's supposed to be able to adjust. We have a remarkable ability to detoxify substances. It's just that the, the detoxification systems get overloaded by all the things we put into our system. So understanding health is not difficult. If you're dealing with a health challenge, it's not difficult. I got a letter today from a guy who should know better. I won't mention his name. He asked me if I've ever, uh, if I've ever cured or I've ever seen rheumatoid arthritis cured. I'm going to write back to him. I'm going to tell him, look, stop eating and the rheumatoid arthritis will go away. Now, of course, you've got to eat. You can't stop eating forever. But just stopping the entrance of food into the system will reduce the inflammatory and immune response autom almost, almost automatically. The main way the body inflames itself, and inflammation is behind all chronic long-term degenerative diseases, the main way the body inflames itself is from some kind of attack. Inflammation is a defensive response. That means all health challenges are the result of a defensive response, a protective response, including autoimmunity, including rheumatoid arthritis. You stop putting things in that initiate a defensive response and inflammation goes away. It's, it's really that simple. In fact, it's too simple. Sometimes things are so simple we don't believe that they're true. Stop eating. If you're dealing with an autoimmune disease and you don't believe me, stop eating for three days. Watch what happens. If you stop eating for three days, you stop the, and, and if you're smoking or drinking alcohol or taking drugs or whatever it is you're doing, if you stop the input, the ingestion of something that, that, that triggers a defensive response, inflammation subsides. Reading uh, from uh, an article here, this is from, uh, this is from uh, medical, uh, uh, medical.net. It's a news story website. Institute scientists have revealed a potent inflammatory mo molecule released by dying cells that triggers inflammation. The stuff is called IL-1 or interleukin-1. And now they want to give you drugs to control interleukin-1. Check this out. The cells die, they release chemicals that induce inflammation. Why would this be? Why would a dying cell induce inflammatory chemicals? Well, remember, inflammation is a protective response. The body has to protect itself from dying cells. When a cell dies, it explodes. And when it explodes, it spews out all of its chemicals. This represents a major threat to the body. So the body has evolved a protective response to cushion itself. It's, almost, it's like a beaver's dam. It protects itself from the dying cell. So instead of scientists figuring out why the heck the cell is dying and then eliminate the cause of that death, they want to come up with drugs that block the inflammatory response. This is the medical model at work. I say, let's figure out why the cells are dying. Why are the cells dying? Well, there's only three things. There's only three reasons. A cell dies because it's starving, because it's suffocated, and because it's toxic. Tox uh, toxicity, or uh, toxification, starvation, and suffocation. These are the three causes of cell death. All disease is cell disease, and all cell disease leading to cell death is the result of starvation, suffocation, and toxification. The reason we don't talk about this, except we talk about it on this program, the reason your doctor doesn't talk about it, or the medical model doesn't talk about it, is because the medical model can do nothing to prevent starvation, suffocation, and toxification. So what they do is they suppress the inflammatory response to the starvation, suffocation, and toxification. 
But the good news is, is we don't need the medical model. We can take care of the starvation and suffocation and toxification ourselves. How? Well, you feed the cell with the mighty 90 essential nutrients and protein, a couple other things. You breathe the cells by moving the body and make sure you're breathing correctly to get oxygen into the blood so the oxygen can get into the cells. And you stop putting the toxins into the system, and toxins include drugs, prescription or otherwise. Toxins include uh, cigarette smoke, toxins include alcohol, and toxins include sugar, and toxins include anything that burdens the cell. And that's pretty much it, folks. That's all we need to do. Starvation, suffocation, and toxification are the causes of cell di disease and cell death. So feeding the cell, breathing the cell, and eliminating toxicity from the body is all we need to do. And I'm talking about rheumatoid arthritis. I'm talking about all kinds of chronic degenerative diseases. I'm talking about autoimmunity. I'm talking about cancer. I'm talking about heart disease. And you can fire your MD, as my friend Dr. Glidden says. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We do have lines open for you. Let's go to Esra in uh, Rhode Island, I believe. Is that right, Esra, Rhode Island? Uh, hello. Hello. Hello, Esra. Uh, hi, I'm here. Can you hear me? I hear you okay. What's going on, ma'am? Okay, I have, I have muscular dystrophy. Muscular dystrophy? You have muscular dystrophy? Yeah, my, my main concern is that I have uh, called acid reflux. Okay. I, I've been reading the, I've always read the label to make sure it's gluten-free, my food, but I'm still struggling. Okay, well, here's the deal, ma'am. You got, you got bigger problems than acid reflux. You got a whole slew of digestive issues. Muscular dystrophy is a horrible, horrible curse of progressive weakness and, and ultimately loss of, of muscle activity and muscle mass. It's a terrible thing. Uh, so you, got all, you probably have had long-standing digestive health issues. The, heart, the um, gastric reflux or the acid reflux is just a symptom of digestive health challenges. So there's a lot of things you want to do. I couldn't quite understand your question. Uh, but you want basically what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're eating foods that do not induce this kind of problem. But at this point, probably a lot of foods are going to do it. Hang on, Esther. Don't go away. We've got to take a commercial break. We'll uh, answer your question when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. the bright side and we do have lines open 844-236-6010 is our number we're talking to Esra in Rhode Island hello there Esra did you did you happen to catch the news I'll, I'll answer your question in a second but it's interesting you're talking about muscular dystrophy there was a headline in the business section of the Wall Street Journal yesterday about a drug that was costing $89,000 a year for people to deal with uh, for people who have mul um, um, uh, muscular dystrophy. Uh, can you believe it? Uh, apparently, uh, they stopped. Uh, they stopped. They stopped making this drug because people were complaining. Eighty-nine thousand dollars a year for a drug. Unbelievable. Did you hear about this, Esra? No. That's no. But... Pe I was. I was going to talk about it earlier because it just. I can't believe these drug companies. Anyway, so you got heart uh, acid reflux issues. A couple of things that you want to think about. First of all, ma'am, you want to link your problem to food. Specific foods are going to cause an acid reflux reaction. Now, at this point, you may have a lot of foods that are doing it, but you want to isolate the, the specific problem foods and then eliminate them. Second thing you want to do is you want to start to acidify the contents of your uh, acidify uh, the contents of your of the stomach. Under conditions of low stomach acid, the likelihood of acid reflux is increased. Believe it or not, it, it sounds counterintuitive, but actually, what happens what happens is is under conditions of low stomach acid, the valve that is supposed to keep acid in the stomach becomes weak and flaccid. Acid reflux is not an acid issue as much as it is a valve issue or a sphincter issue, not a valve, but a sphincter issue. The uh, the opening, the, the the muscular opening between uh, muscular 
connection between the stomach and the esophagus becomes loose and flaccid when you have acid reflux issues, and this can be caused by poor production of stomach acid using apple cider vinegar or also something called betaine HCL. Get on the, get on the ultimate enzymes, use them with all your meals. First, isolate problem foods and eliminate them. Second, use your ultimate enzymes with all your meals. Use a little bit of apple cider vinegar with all your meals. Also, you're going to want to support the health of the liver and the intestine and the pancreas. Those are also all involved. You might want to get yourself something called pancreatic enzymes or pancreatin if you're not already using them. These are all good things to do anyway. These are all good things for everybody to do. Pancreatin, there's a little pancreatin in the ultimate enzymes. You might want to use a little bit more pancreatin. If you're not on a probiotic supplement, get on one. Using probiotics can sometimes help. Having the wrong kinds of bacteria or not enough bacteria can cause cause reflux issues. So using uh, fermented foods and the ultimate nightly essence with all of your meals. Uh, a little bit of fiber might help if you're not already doing fiber. Are you having, uh, are your bowel movements okay or are you constipated? Yeah, yeah, I'm not constipated. Okay, good. Then, uh, then maybe just a little bit of fiber, grind up some flaxseed fiber. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. Grind up a little bit of flaxseed fiber and put it in water and drink it down once a day. And then also you might want to do a couple extra things. The Fucoid Z from Longevity has a coating and soothing effect on the digestive tract. And then also using lecithin granules and bile salts can help you. You can buy both of those at a health food store. Anything else you want to ask me, Astra? Uh, how do I isolate? Like, uh, how do you isolate the problem foods? Yeah. Okay. So here's what you do. This is how you isolate problem foods. This is for anybody dealing with a digestive health issue. This is for you, Estra, and anybody out there dealing with a digestive health issue. I know we say it a lot, but it, it bears repeating. First, you stop eating for a couple of days. That hits the reset. I call that hitting the reset button. That clears the decks. A lot of times when, you, uh, when we eat on a regular basis, food stays in the intestine and you can react to it. Food that's sitting around in the intestine can become reactive. So it's important that you clear the decks. Don't eat for two or three days. You can do a Swero V cleanse or you can just do a complete fast. A Swero V cleanse is where you do half a bottle of Swero V. Every hour you can get Swero V from Longevity. Call 866-735-2470. Tell them you want Swero V. S-U-E-R-O-V-I-E. If you don't want to do a Swero V, you can just fast. I, I think a fast is a great thing to do anyway. Intermittent fasting is an, aw an awesome anti-aging strategy. Strategy. But just for you, or for anybody who's dealing with digestive health issues, two or three days of fasting. Then when you start eating again, start eating one food at a time and take notes on how you feel after you eat that food. You'll find that foods that you're used to eating on a regular basis will cause problems. It's typically your favorite foods that cause problems. Take, take, take notes like you're a detective taking notes. You know, if you ever have a crime committed, the cops come and they take a report. They're always taking notes. You got to take notes. A good scientist takes notes. So you take notes on how you feel in response to specific foods. Foods that cause problems are to be eliminated. That's how you isolate problem foods. That's called the food diary and elimination diet. Okay? Okay. All right. Well, God bless you, Esther. Good luck. Hey, let me give you a couple of interesting supplements that you might want to uh, think about with, to help you with your muscular dystrophy. Uh, essential fatty acids and vitamin E, 400 international units of vitamin E. Alpha lipoic acid, 400 milligrams a day. High doses of vitamin C. And if you, can, if you can afford it, it's probably a good idea to do intravenous vitamin C for your muscular dystrophy. It can have remarkable protective effects. Vitamin, vitamin C is amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, if you're not uh, if you're uh, not doing the ultimate nightly I'm sorry the ultimate uh, uh, ultimate EFA plus go get yourself Udo's blend either the ultimate EFA plus from longevity or Udo's blend either way for your essential fatty acids make sure you take them with vitamin E of course you want to do the entire healthy start pack the ultimate selenium can be helpful for you maybe 400 to 600 micrograms a day you're gonna have to review this on our archive page at Ben Fuchs archives or brightsideben.com because I'm giving you a bunch of stuff. And don't forget protein, good old protein. I like bone broth protein, especially for you. For any kind of muscular health issues or bone health issues, bone broth protein can be very important. There's tons more stuff, Esther, but that's a good start for you. All right. God bless you. Good luck with everything. I hope I helped you out. Okay. Take care, Esther. Bye-bye. All right. Let's go to uh, Texas and welcome John to the Bright Side. Good morning, John. Hello, it's John. Hello, John. How you doing? Doing pretty good, I guess. My, uh, okay. I do have a really painful 
frozen shoulder situation. Oh, no. That's been okay. lasting for seven weeks. And, and, oh, uh, that's terrible. You can't move it? Uh, I can move it. It's, it's, it's about, uh, about uh, you know, just breast high, but I can't move it above that. And it's really hard to sleep. And, and uh, Oh, my goodness. Is it painful even when you don't move it? Oh, yeah, it's extremely painful. You go into like a, like a spasm, and it feels like you're... Oh, gosh, that's terrible. Okay, a couple things for you for frozen shoulder. And, you know, it, it's not that unusual, believe it or not. I think it's about 2% of the population has uh, frozen shoulder issues. How old are you, by the way? 58. Okay. Any issues with arthritis? I did have, uh, I would say it's kind of dormant, but uh, I had arthritis at a really young age. Okay, well, this is part of the, this is part of the deal. Uh, you probably heard us talking about connective tissue. You basically have a a, sw a swelling in the connective tissue uh, around the shoulder area, in the ligaments around the shoulder area, and it's restricting your mobility. Um, so, a couple things you're going to want to do. First of all, you absolutely, positively should be related uh, should be doing body work. If you're not already doing body work, go find a, a you know you, it may be painful to do rolfing, but that's really what you should probably be doing. You probably heard us talk about rolfing. Thing, that's really what you should be doing is rolfing. But if it's too painful, at least massage. Something to loosen that up. The second thing you want to do is you want to look for issues that are causing inflammation, and that means digestive. If you have any digestive health issues, those need to be addressed. And the third thing you could do is start doing some nutritional supplements, especially fats, i.e. essential fatty acids, and vitamin E. I'd be using nine of the ultimate EFA capsules or a couple of tablespoons, maybe even three tablespoons of Udo's blend a day. And uh, uh, vitamin E as well, 400 international units of vitamin E a day. I'd be using uh, uh, vitamin C as well, 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day. Make sure you're getting enough of the B complex. Um, niacin is particularly important. Get on the Healthy Start Pack, including the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and the Ultimate Niacin. Those can be very helpful. You want to also start to help uh, start rebuilding that frozen shoulder using bone broth protein or bone broth, cartilage containing products. Anything with cartilage is going to be important. Important. And interestingly and counterintuitively, you want to be moving your shoulder. You want to be exercising. If there's a tightness in the connective tissue, doing stretching exercises or yoga or anything that you could do to loosen that frozen shoulder, uh, loosen, the, loosen the ligaments around there can be very helpful. The glucogel caps also can be important, uh, but nothing is going to be as important as body work for you. Uh, if you can't find a massage therapist or a chiropractor, uh, you might want to look, look into rolfing, although as I say, rolfing can be a little bit aggressive. Uh, but it is super, super helpful. I'm a big fan of rolfing. All right, that's all the time. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What? How are you spelling that? Rolfing. R O L F I N G. If you want more information, send, uh, send me an email, Ben at KSCO.com, and put your phone number in there, and I'll give you a call back, and we'll uh, I'll get you some more information. We are just out of time. Thank you so much, John. Appreciate your call. And that's all the time we have for today on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Check out my Truth Skin Health products at TruthTreatments.com. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.